Here we are at the 11th annual Satellites Unlimited Oscars. John, we've been waiting for this event. We've been talking about it for quite some time. We got an exciting broadcast today, a live episode version. We certainly do. Grant, it is going to be the biggest night of the year on the most spectacular stage of all, the 11th annual Satellites Unlimited Oscars. It is unquestionably our night of champions. Absolutely. So I believe we have first on the docket, we have our uh, chief operations officer, Mr. Kevin Peel. Is that correct? That is correct. Sir. So we're, we're going to do a run through. We're going to have Kevin Peel on. We're going to have Greg Maddox, Josh Meeks, Joel Davis. It's going to be an action packed episode. So I think, uh, you know, Kevin, he's uh, he's standing by. We're going to go ahead and bring him in. He's uh, set for the docket. Here he is looking sharp. Making his May way down I the add? aisle. Here he is. Mr. Kevin Peel. Everybody. All, right, yeah. 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 All right. Give me a round of applause here. So, so Kevin, what do the Oscars mean to you, my friend? Wow, we're coming out with a zinger right out the gate. The Oscars, I tell you what, this is the one time a year for me that things, it's just humbling, especially when I have an opportunity to go stand up in that podium and, and just start looking. I have to be careful not to make eye contact with certain people, and I have to kind of look over them because I, it just, it's just humbling, right? I mean, we had the best of the best piled up in one room, and without these, I mean, they set the bar every day. So, yeah, I mean, that's it really in a nutshell. It humbles me every year. So, yeah, you think of how many awards that are given out every year, and there's two new categories this year. There's Warehouse Manager Award and FSM Award. If you had to pick a favorite, Kevin, do you have one? Um, a favorite like that I think might win? No, just a, not necessarily a, a, oh, a, a horse in the award. race that you're picking. but <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't think we were going to start a, engaging a favorite award bets. overall, yeah. I, I might start leveraging bets here, and I was like, <laughs> I might have to make some things change. Yeah, maybe that much like in. an 817 trifecta or something <laughs> at the dog track. Yeah, no, that's correct. <laughs> You know, there's there's a couple. The two of the new awards, those are like silent killers, man. Like those two, the, the, when you think about the FSM award, the, the warehouse manager award, these, these are just things that have not had the visibility in the past. You know, performance really has, right? In our lead doll culture, we've done a pretty good job of capturing the office level, right? The uh, recognizing our world-class technicians, but there's some layers in between that uh, we just don't often have visibility on. So I think that's a big, big, I, I'm looking forward to that tonight, right? Because I, I, I People, I think a lot of people are out there like, who is it going to be? Who is it going to be? I don't know. We're going to find out. We will indeed. And, uh, Kevin, what categories are you presenting tonight? Well, you know what? <laughs> That's another good – I really would like to see these questions next year because I feel like <laughs> these are scripted to the point to where I don't have a chance. I said the, the, I said the top and the best in my favorite two categories this year were top three FSM and warehouse manager. Well, John P., I happen to be presenting both of those. <laughs> so, as well, you should. <laughs> that might be awkwardly convenient, but guys, that's, that, that's the truth. That's it. Hey. So, are you more of a guy that has a speech in his pocket and pulls it out, or are you more of an ad lib type of guy? Oh, boy, we're going there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you about my speech writing. Uh, I prepared a speech last year uh, because Brandy required that I do so. Uh, it was a flashback to, to my years in school. It, when she was done with it with a red pen, it looked like a, a crime scene. Uh, it was, it, it, it kind of scarred me a little bit. So then I went back, made the corrections. That weren't good enough either. After about 14 submissions, I finally got all, a clean bill of health. And I started looking at it, and I'm walking up to the podium, and all I did was just stick it on the podium, and I never looked at it. Never looked at it. So I try. Look, do I have a script tonight? Who's to say I won't lock up? You know, I think that's the biggest fear is that you lock up and you discredit the value of who you're getting ready to award. And as a, I could just never imagine doing it. So do I have something if I get in a bind? Like, I don't know what would happen. And I just lock up, I've got something I can go to. Those lights are bright up there. Man, they are. You just never know, right? But yeah, I'm typically an off. I might even start on the script 
and then just bam, <laughs> off, and then back on. I so. think most people, speaking of betting earlier, I think if most people were to take bets, they yeah. probably would bet that you're an ad lib type of guy. Yes, so. sir. Yeah, That's yeah, probably safe. That's probably you uh, better. <laughs> but Kevin, let's let's talk about food now. How about that? Okay, so have you had an insider's look yet at the menu tonight? <laughs> oh, I have not. Um, but I will say this: I feel well uh, from an entree perspective. Oh yes, yes, I go to beef every year, John okay. P. The one thing that is always unpredictable is the. Uh, beforehand the you know hors d'oeuvres and things of that nature and the meet and greet time it's you're just not quite sure what you're going to get there but i do think i saw some salmon as i was approaching to the north uh so that's always that always puts me in a happy place but you're a beef guy though you're right guy. okay oh, yes, all right yes sir yeah, which that answers the next question i was going to ask it was going to be beef chicken or fish but oh, no. when you when you take a look at the hors d'oeuvres so you it's funny because knowing that we had some food questions for you knowing that you're somewhat of a culinary savant so to speak I was looking at the hors d'oeuvres and thinking about you. Is he a four cheese macaroni bite type of guy or is he a salmon on a bagel chip type of guy? And you just surprised me with that, that answer. Well, it, it, I don't know how many people would have answered it the same way. The, this is where I have a problem, though, in this type of environment. The problem with the salmon and the bagel bite, you're probably only supposed to eat one or two. The problem Kevin Peel has with a salmon <laughs> bagel bite is it takes about 40 to have an effect <laughs> and feel like you've accomplished something. So for a bigger frame male, what I do is I try to eat a little later lunch, um, and, you know, I'll have something light right beforehand so that I just don't make an absolute spectacle of myself <laughs> over the bagel salmon bites. <laughs> <laughs> That's not funny. That's just real. <laughs> so, Kevin, as a, as a former Oscar winner leading the Jackson office in two consecutive Office of the Years back in 2017 and 2018, mm -hmm. what did that moment mean to you? Well, I think the biggest, the absolute biggest deal with being in an Office of the Year, whether it's from a safety perspective or just overall Office of the Year, it boils down to one thing. It's not about the person leading that office. It's about the team being able to come in and celebrate and, and to truly be recognized in the right event. When I think about those years in the Daniel Peacocks and the Billy Hudsons mm -hmm. and the Anthony Champagnes, right, and just, just grinding. And those guys, they didn't, they didn't always get the credit they deserved, right, like in terms of just the, the, the lights and the cameras and the calls and this and that. So that is what was so special about it, was being able to bring team members over to this event, to the Oscars, and, and, and truly celebrate their accomplishments. Yeah, and so I, I want to apologize because we are live. And this is the, you would appreciate this, Kevin, is that the, the value of highlighting. You know, <laughs> many of your emails are highlighted, and you can notice on John's got, got paper, <laughs> he's actually highlighted. So he was actually correct that that question should have gone to me. And see, look, oh, well, Grant have, Hoban's not highlighted. So now, um, I thought I was prepared, but John P. <laughs> took it to a whole nother level. So, John, I'm going to take that last question so go we can get man. back on track. You go ahead and follow up with question oh, number good. nine. Okay, yeah. so we're talking about the Oscars in, uh, in 2017, 2018. But uh, the Monroe team uh, that won last year, you have a tremendous familiarity with uh, that team, of course. And uh, how did you feel seeing them win last year? Well, first of all, I will say this. I felt like there was probably a miscount, that it, you know, something in a voting machine or missing chads <laughs> or paper ballots. I was like, certainly these guys aren't office of the year. And then we went back and we counted five more times. And, and they were officer of the year. So automatically, man, I was like, okay, it's legit, man. This is real. They are on yeah. top. And, man, has it been a fun journey. What was the, the, it, everything in this business, whether it's our people, whether it's just an office, it's a stair step. And, and that stair step, man, you take those steps. And sometimes you might trip on a step. But you keep stepping. And then you look. And you're there. And for Monroe last year, they accomplished something that hasn't been done in that building, uh, quite frankly. And to, it, for somebody who had been in the building, and those are some of my most intimate relationships, right? I'm like lying to if I tell you those are some of the closest relationships I have. That's a special night. When you finally see a team that you were a part of, no Daniel, no different than like Daniel and the, uh, the, you know, Billy and those guys in Jackson, right? Same thing. When you see them standing up and doing things on their own like they do, that's what that's what's special that's that is what this whole thing's about when we talk about our core values right that is it very special i, I love that you mentioned core values because that kind of is referencing question number 10 here mm. so we polled our audience on what they thought you might slip in during your oscar speech mm. a occasion food reference 
B, a core values reference, or C, an oh boy slips out. Can, can you confirm if either of these are in there, or should we just wait to find out? No, I can tell you. I'm, I'm, at probably, 60, I'm probably 66%. I know I nailed two out of three. <laughs> if, I, if, if I'm in a conversation, especially when y'all are coming like, the, bam, bam, there's going to be an oh boy. Like, I'm going I'm to get you because you, you know you did me wrong on that question right there, one of y'all. So I know there was an oh boy. And core values, that's the, you, you should just chalk that's going to be in there. That's guaranteed to be in there. That, every conversation I have, um, every experience I have, everything I'm a part of involves those core values. So if you, if you were a betting person going into this thing, you go, you go all in. You go all in on the core values. And then I would say Grant, would, if you, get, you call Grant or John P., they'll probably say you need to slide a little side bet on, oh, boy, because it's going to be there. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kevin, we appreciate you taking a little bit of time with us on uh, this live broadcast here. As you know, many of our team are, are coming down here, um, you know, checking out the hors d'oeuvres. So uh, it's, it's officially mingle time at this point. So uh, thanks for spending a few minutes with us and, uh, and, you know, giving some of our folks some insight into who you are. Yeah, you know, in closing, I would just say this, man. If I was Justin Shellstrom, life would be great, and I would be perfect, but I'm not. So I'm going to go eat some I'm gonna go eat some more derbs and have a great night. Thank you All so right. much, everybody. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank, Thank you, you, Kevin. Well, there you have it, John, uh, Chief Operations Officer, Kevin Peel. Always a pleasure. I think that anybody that knows Kevin would say that he's fairly animated. Oh, most definitely, and certainly someone who can ad-lib, does not need a script at all, and a uh, very dynamic, charismatic individual, no question about that. Yeah, and so, uh, you know, I, I thought it was interesting when he talked about, you know, kind of the team concept, leading that Jackson team to victory, two consecutive Office of the Years in 2017, 2018. Then we saw the Monroe come out on top mm -hmm. as champions. And you really think about it, me and you both remember, uh, you know, when Monroe was – it was a pretty rough location for a long period of time when we launched yeah. that. You remember that? I remember very well. January of 2010. That's when we launched. Uh, we well, we were. I guess we inherited or were given the territory of Monroe and Hattiesburg because yeah. there's another service provider in that area or those areas rather who were not delivering lead donk performance. And uh, we went in there, and man, it was just tremendous to, get, to go there, to watch that office grow, to see the level of talent that built over the years. And uh, I mean, just absolutely outstanding. Absolutely. And speaking of, you know, we're get, referencing a lot of, uh, you know, historical events, right? Well, there's nobody can, that can lay out kind of the a historical reference better than uh, Vice President of Operations, Greg Maddox. So we're going to bring him in here, uh, you know, and, I, you know, the questions we ask Greg could be a little bit different. He's been here forever, John. He has been here forever. What's it now, Greg? 20, here, Greg? 22 years? Uh, 20 something. 20 something years. So, and here's something that I think the three of us have in common. I believe that the three of us have attended every single Oscars since 2013. I believe you're correct. Yeah. So, so, Greg, you know, you've been at every one of these events uh, since the inception. Started at Bar Barber Motorsport. Uh, how has the event changed over the years? Locations definitely changed. Um, the people have changed, of course. It, it's gotten better every year. Um, it's been really exciting to watch. I remember walking up to the first one and looking at my wife and saying, could you believe, you know, when I started here over 10 years ago that we'd be going to an event like this for this company? And her response was, I didn't believe you'd still be there. So, <laughs> <laughs> didn't have a great track record with, uh, with staying with jobs for a very long period yeah. of time. And, uh, but definitely this one worked out. And the Oscars, yeah, it's grown every year. It's gotten better every year. Love coming here. My wife loves coming here. It's great. I love the bow tie tonight, too. I'm, you know, some people can pull that off. I actually considered it, and every time I chicken out. Well, luckily, I walked by that mirror before I came over here because I saw one side was down. I was like, oh. So I had to, had to correct. But I suggested that the training department have spinner ones just to show off our personalities. <laughs> but let me ask you this. In regards to, you know, the past events right there, can you name every location that we've had it at? You want to try? I know we had Barber one year. Uh, I remember it being at Embassy Suites one year. That's right. Yep. That was year number two. Freaking here. Yep. Um, the, there's I, two more. There's one over by the Civic Center. And I can't. Uh, yep. Weston. The Weston. That's yeah. right. There's only um, one more left. One more I, left. And it was in year number three. 
I cannot remember. 2015, it was the Marriott on 280. So out of all those venues, which one's your favorite? I love it here. Love it here? Yeah, this is great. Absolutely. You know, and Greg, as the Vice President of Operations here at Satellites Unlimited, um, you're heavily involved in all aspects of the business. What do the Oscars mean to you? It's just a time to come and recognize the best of the best. Um, I love getting here, getting to see technicians in particular. I mean, it's nice to see the office staffs, but technicians, that's where it's all at. They're the ones that do the hard work. They're the ones that put in the hours to get us here uh, to make this company what it is. Absolutely love it. And no question, the face of the company, the technicians, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, so you're obviously presenting tonight, right? So what award do you have the privilege of presenting tonight? <laughs> Top 20 techs. Top um, 20 techs. I will say that that is, it's my favorite. Um, it's one that I feel very close to. It's also very humbling when you get up there and you look at some of the accomplishments. You're like, wow, these guys are way better than I ever was. And that's got to mean a whole heck of a lot seeing that you started your career off as a technician. Absolutely. When, when the announcement went out where, where this was going to be, when it was going to be this year, um, secretly, I didn't ask anybody, but secretly I was hoping I was the top 20 technicians. To me, that's, that's where I like to be. You know, it's funny, too, when you're presenting at these events, um, for anyone, myself included, there's always a little bit of the butterflies that, that happen, the nervousness. Um, what goes through your mind as you approach that stage and that podium? Um, as, you're, as you're approaching the stage, for me, it's, God, there's a lot of people here. <laughs> um, I was that kid in, in high school that would take zeros on oral book reports because I wasn't going to speak yeah. in front of people. Um, life changed a lot when I got into training. Um, I will tell you, you know, one of the things that I learned was if you knew your subject matter, it wasn't that big a deal to speak in front of people. And um, I feel like I know these guys. Uh, I love getting up there and getting to inter introduce this group. That's outstanding. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, for there's been quite a people asking me this question. So uh, will you be updating the fully aware chat while in <laughs> attendance tonight? Uh, I updated it shortly before I got up here. Uh, it, the fully aware has been a little spotty here over the last couple of weeks with everything going on. You're always uh, on there. So, I, I, I you know, I thought it was a valid question. It, it definitely you is know? a valid question. Uh, my wife updates it for me from time to time. She will tell you that there's a lot of times when we're driving down the road, she almost put on there Greg Maddox's secretary yeah. because I'll be, she'll be reading me emails. Okay. I'll be telling her what to type back. She'll be reading what's being posted on fully aware. I'll say, hey, can you type this for me? Um, so, yeah, it's, I don't turn loose of that one very often. Uh, I guess I probably will for those few minutes while I'm up there. Now, Greg, somebody told me that Mr. Kevin Peel is notorious for checklists. <laughs> did, I, I don't know if that's true or not, but, I mean, did, did, Ke did, Kevin, did Kevin give you a checklist for tonight's event? <laughs> he did not. <laughs> But that's a, very, that's a very valid question. Uh, he has checklists for almost everything. Uh, that's so I've heard. <laughs> Keep uh, us all on point. Yes, that's absolutely. So, Greg, in your opinion, how prestigious is an Oscar in our industry? It's very prestigious. We're the only company that does it. Um, the reason I say it's very prestigious is it isn't because we're the only company that does it. It's because we have the best employees in the industry. Um, I've had the pleasure of visiting a lot of Dish Internal, also visiting a lot of uh, the, our fellow RSPs, retailers, and I will tell you that I've never stepped into one and felt like we were outclassed. Um, our guys are the best of the best, so it's extremely prestigious. So, Greg, since you have been to every single Oscars event, is there one Oscars in particular that sticks out Heads above the rest, maybe has some particular uh, Oscars lore or some, something specific that you remember? Nothing along those lines. The first one does stick out because it was the first. Um, I remember talking my wife, to my wife as we were getting there. Uh, you know, I mentioned about her saying she didn't think I'd still be here, but she also <laughs> told me how great she thought it was that we were coming to an event like this because up until that point, she had never really met anybody that I worked with. Yeah. Um, we. You know, wives and families were pretty hands off. And it was, I mean, I was over 10 years with the company at that point. So it was, that's really the thing that sticks out to me. It's amazing, too. The, uh, the production values have greatly improved over the years <laughs> from that very first Oscars. Well, you, you should know you, you were doing the presenting, right? Yeah, so, 
So, uh, you know, and the idea of the Oscars, right, when we go back to that, we're going back to 2012, Andy Goldblatt, a former mentor of yours, um, it was his idea for this event. So back then in 2012, what was his vision for such a historic event? I can't say it was much different than where it's turned out. I mean, I, I think it was truly about having the opportunity to recognize excellence, which is what we're getting the opportunity to do. Um, and I think that it's continued to grow every year, get better and better. So I, I think he'd be proud. I think he would, too. I can attest to that. And, you know, you really think about the schedules. It used to be six and ones. We have the option for five and twos, four and threes. We think about company picnics. Yeah. Um, a lot came from those initiatives back then that provide some of the work-life balance. And we're constantly looking to improve that, right? Absolutely. Uh, it's, it's a tough job. I mean, when you talk about, especially from a technician standpoint, you leave the house. We expect you to be at your first job by 7.59. So you kind of know when you're going to start your day. What happens from there, nobody knows. Uh, the tech has no clue until he gets to that first job what it's going to be like. He leaves that, goes to the next one. God only knows what that's going to be like. It may be he may come across the, uh, I think it's your term, a slaughterhouse special yeah. and be there all day Very fine of that. rebuilding. <laughs> or it could be as easy as going in and changing the remote address. So it's really tough to not know when you're going to get done. Yep. Uh, you're also working in all types of weather. It can be extremely hot, extremely cold. Nobody knows what you're going to be doing the next day. Um, it's a pretty tough situation but we're doing everything we can to try and make it better. You know, things like the tech curfew, making sure our guys are done with their last job by 7 p.m., those type things. I know 7 p.m. probably sounds a little far out there, uh, but I think anybody, you could, I know you could. You and I both know <laughs> that, that is darn good. I, I've told before, I can remember going to a house and leaving after midnight and getting up the next day and going back because it still wasn't done. Uh, those things happen. So we're doing a much better job, I think, at getting – better at not having that happen to Tex, but we've still got a ways to go to make it right. Well, there you have it. Greg Maddox, the Vice President of Operations, former technician, has attended every single Oscar since its inception in 2013. Greg, thank you so much for, for taking a few minutes with us and uh, providing a little bit of insight uh, for our people out there. Well, thanks for having me. I really enjoyed it. Appreciate you guys and love listening to the podcast. Oh, it's a great job. Hey, right. look at that, Thanks the so podcast. Right. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> All right. I'll tell you what, that was fantastic. I mean, just having Greg on here as a guest and, and the history yeah. that he has in his company. Yeah. You know, I, I, we should have asked Greg also about the fact of uh, – when he first started here, I think that they actually had to hand route work orders to where they had to actually fax them over uh, to the technicians. And look how far we've come in technology, Greg. Right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I just I'll be honest, uh, you know, just hearing, you know, some of the background and hearing, uh, you know, some of the banter between you and Greg. I just feel so privileged to be, yeah. you know, to be able to say that I've attended every single one of these events. Well, I tell you what, let's keep the show rolling. Let's do it. We have uh, Chief Financial Officer Joel Davis that's going to jo join us uh you know this is a uh, this is somewhat of a leadership rapid fire john if you will hey, and uh, joel we're gonna put you on the spot a little bit my All friend right. okay i hope you don't mind but um, because we are here in a magnificent venue a beautiful facility you are the the maestro of fiscal financials so and how well i hesitate to ask this question but i'm gonna ask it anyway so how much do we spend on this event every year, or is that confidential? <laughs> <laughs> I actually know the number. I'm not going to say the number. Okay, it's fair enough. Wraps. All right. See, there's mystique. <laughs> there's it, it's it's a big event. There's some mystique there. You got to keep the you got to keep the magic. So. And that's fine. I told you I put you on the spot. So. <laughs> So, Joel, how many Oscars does this make for you? And, and in how many of those years have you been a presenter at the event? This is six Oscars. This is my second time as a presenter. So pretty new to presenting, but yeah. been to a couple. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. And so. Then, oh, you go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Did you have a follow-up question on that? No, not at all. Okay. Yeah. So. It's, it's live, by the way. Yeah, it's a live <laughs> broadcast, but I, I don't want to, like, buzzkill any question that we already have written on paper. Yeah. So proceed, John. I will proceed then. So, uh, Joel, what award will we be presenting tonight? I am the corporate lead dog. So I'm presenting the corporate oh, award. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
All right. So be for a corporate team member who who's the lead dog to to kind of look at that team as well, not just the team in the field. Um, really kind of think about this award as kind of service, dedication, mem- you know, long-term member. Of the, or it doesn't have to be long-term, but, you know, someone who's really committed to the team um, and performing at a high level at, at the corporate office. The corporate office. Last yeah. year was the first ever. It was Lionel. Mm-hmm. Yep. Lionel Brock. Was Lionel first Brock. Winner last year, yep. Yeah, and I remember you presenting that. So let me ask you this. So the corporate award. So... As are you exempt from nominating yourself uh, for that award? Um, there, yes, I am. I, are you? Uh, I don't choose the award. I don't choose the award on my own. Yeah. Um, but yes, I'm exempt. Okay. All right. All right. And as a CFO of the company, what what do the Oscars mean to you? So I think it's a great opportunity. I mean, obviously we're spread out with 15 locations. 300 plus technicians. So it's a great time to bring everyone together, our top performers together, um, give them an opportunity uh, to to be recognized and for me to meet them, right? So mm-hmm. I try to make it around to offices, but if I'm at an office, it may not be their loadout day, right. you know? So this gives me an opportunity to meet our top performers, see who they are. I'm always love seeing the top 20. I don't know who the winners are. I know the winner of my award and one other and that's it. I don't know, I don't know. So uh, it's exciting to see kind of who the, who the top dogs are, enjoy yeah. that. So we budget many things as an organization, including recognition, right? And we're always looking to make things, you know, bigger and bolder for the event. So let me ask you this. Would you like to see a box stacking competition included no. into the event no. next year? And would Bobby no. Smith be eligible? No. Uh, Bobby Smith is out after he completely dominated the box. We, we spent, what, 50% more than we planned on that giveaway. So uh, good job by the Albertville team to all come together and stack boxes yeah, like significantly higher than Grant could. Yeah, three <laughs> practice runs. In all fairness, the Birmingham warehouse didn't have all the materials <laughs> to stack, so uh, that was a bad day for me you, you to go in your office with my head hung low. Congratulations to Bobby. We're happy Absolutely. to happy to give the money away. Couldn't yeah. go to somebody better. Right. Uh, but we're we're a little bit more careful with what we expect to give away versus what we actually give away. Yeah, <laughs> possibly incorporating a time limit could probably yes, be helpful, right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Now, Joe, you are a great CFO, but rumor has it that you could have possibly had a second career in football. Uh, apparently, I, I heard this recently that there's a picture t- there was a picture taken of you at the Hattiesburg picnic last year, making an incredible one-handed grab. So I got to ask, was was that photoshopped, or did, I mean, did that really happen? So that the picture's legit. I'm pretty sure I'm. Uh, it's a pretty impressive picture. It's, it's made the rounds a little bit, but I actually did not make the catch. The pictures before I miss the catch. Okay. So it looks incredible, like right there, football at the tips of my fingers, but I didn't make the catch. But I shouldn't have told that because <laughs> nobody really knew except those that were at the Hattiesburg picnic. Yeah. Now they know the truth, huh? They know the truth. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't actually catch it. So, so Joel, as a uh, financial guy, you have insight into what our technicians make each week and each year. For our new folks out there, how lucrative is the technician role? So, I mean, you know, we, we have a, a, a fairly large group of, uh, of individuals who are making a very large paycheck. Um, so we have, we have several guys that make more than six digits, um, so make over 100000 a year. We have, we have actually a pretty good group that makes more than 75000 a year. So, you know, obviously those that are, those that are above 100000 are the best of the best. They're making sacrifice. That's a choice. That's a choice to make, you know, to, to, to make that type of money. Um, but they're, they're kind of, you can ask payroll especially. It's payroll's on my team. You can ask them especially because they, they know those guys because those guys know everything about what they're doing, right? They're, those technicians know invent, if, if something funny happens in inventory, they're immediately calling payroll. Like they're on top of their stuff. They're, they're, they sell. They, they are, I mean, if, if you look at some of those top performers, it's, it's all the way across the board on all their metrics. They're, their TC12 is next to nothing. Um, it's, it's really amazing uh, what some of our guys do, some of our technicians do. It's pretty impressive. So extremely lucrative, to it's say the least. Extremely lucrative, yeah. Absolutely. So, Joel, in your opinion, how difficult is the technician role, and what do they mean to our business? So I would say, without question, it's the hardest job in the company. It's definitely harder than my job. Uh, I couldn't do it. Again, I see those top performers, and I'm in the heat, in the cold, in different house. Every house is different. Like, 
good luck getting into my attic. Like, I, I don't want to be in my attic. Like, it, it's small. Um, so to, to see what, what they do is, is incredible. I mean, and it's ultimately what the whole company is built on. It, our technicians are the face of the company. They are, they're everything. And, and our job is to support them. They have the hardest job. Um, and, and the goal of myself and my team is just to support them. Um, and, and they're the face, they're the face of us, they're the face of DISH. Right now, what's happening, right, with DISH, like mm. we are the positive face of DISH right now, yeah. right? The media is not positive right now with what's happened with the outage, but we're going out every day trying to figure things out as we go, and the technicians are the ones out there having to figure it out, right? You get to a customer, you don't know what's wrong, because DISH can't tell us anything, and out there making it happen. And no question about that. I mean, our technicians are Superman strong. It's a very physically demanding job, and we appreciate everything that they do. No Absolutely. question. Absolutely. So following up on that last uh, question, Joel, many of our techs make more money than they ever have prior to joining us, and sometimes it's difficult navigating through that growth. Is there a particular author or person of influence that you would recommend pertaining to saving money and or budgeting this newly found income? That, that's, that's a big one. There's there's not anybody I would probably fully agree with. I think Dave Ramsey's a good one, right? To think about not lots of debt, not a great idea, right? Um, he's a good one. Oh, I don't know otherwise. Um, so Dave Ramsey. <laughs> Dave Ramsey's a good one. Yeah, hey, I he's like not the right on everything, but he's a pretty good one. So Dave Ramsey endorsement from CFO Joel Davis. Well, Joel. We really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your uh, your time here tonight. We know that you'll be presenting. There's a preparation process there. Thanks for joining us on the podcast right. today. Thank you, both. Thank you. All right. All, right. All right. So there you have it, CFO Joel Davis. We got one more guest, and it's the big dog. It is, Mr. Josh Meeks. That's right. So we're going to bring Josh in here. We're And you know what? You know what, John P., we're not too far behind on our schedule. I think about five minutes right there. So sorry about that, Josh. So we are a little behind. Yeah, we're I'm a little gonna, behind. I'm going to hold you accountable. Yeah, you please do. We're a little behind. So <laughs> stick true to our values. <laughs> All right, so hit me up with some questions. All right, so here's the first question for you, Josh. So we, we are so appreciative of everything that goes into this event for our people. And, and Brandy Singleton, of course, really is the master coordinator for this event. And uh, for those of you who may not know, Brandy Singleton is our executive uh, assistant, I believe. Is that the That's official correct. title? That's okay. Correct. And uh, I know we try to get Brandy on, but uh, she's so busy during this event that it's hard to uh, catch some time with her. Uh, what can you say about the work that Brandy puts into this event? Well, I'll tell you what, there's countless hours of planning that go in. We start almost eight months in advance to plan this night and there she spends countless hours coordinating keeping us on track as you know I'm sure you've all experienced that with Brandy she will make sure that we deliver we hit our deadlines and ultimately this weekend I mean by the end of the night she is spent because she has worked her tail off for all of us and we're super super thankful for it, what she puts into the event. Now she does a great job every single year at the Oscars. Yeah, I got a little dose of that today, helping Brandy out in preparation. Let me tell you, John P., I'm tired already. So the event hasn't even started, so I can imagine how tired she is. So do you ever get nervous before the launch of the big event or before it's taken a, a foot on stage, Josh? So this year's a little different. Um, traditionally, it is a very big room, um, and it is a lot of people. It's the most people that I have the privilege of speaking in front of. So the answer to that question is unequivocally yes. I do get nervous. Um, over the years, I've become more comfortable in the room. This year, I've been more nervous about this 10 minutes than I have <laughs> getting in front of the whole room to speak because I had no idea. Uh, for, for, the, for the audience out there, I requested the questions in advance. And everything was fine until Friday afternoon when I got an email from Passionate that said that was not going to happen. And I said... Okay, here we go. Um, and I've been nervous ever since. So we are good. We are good there. So, Josh, do you have a uh, routine to prepare for the Oscars? Maybe uh, a 16-mile six, run or a heavy workout or maybe just a, a glass of Merlot? So, actually, I do. I always make sure that I have one, and I'm going to reemphasize one, pregame drink. And it, it was very good this evening. Yeah. Um, nothing fancy. A little bit of bourbon on the rocks. One of them, 
Um, and I also got a good workout in this morning. Ah, okay. So yeah. we are stress levels are at a, in a good spot right now. Bourbon on the rocks, that sounds good, actually. Yeah, it does. So, hey, let me issue this, Josh. Many of the, the awards given out tonight have the words lead dog in front of them. So what does being the lead dog mean to you? So for everybody out there, if, if you don't know what lead dog's about, let's take a minute and talk about it. So it all goes back to Roddy McKinney. And believe it or not, before he started and got into the satellite business, he sold insurance in Alaska. And when he was up there, he actually got to see the dog sled tra teams training for the Iditarod. Getting to know the trainers, getting to know the mushers, he quickly realized that there is one lead dog on every team. That dog is the most intelligent dog. It's typically the fastest dog and typically the dog, the dog with the best endurance. So we, he thought it was appropriate, and we've adopted it, and it is ingrained in everything we are. Quite honestly, it's what the whole night is about. It is about being the lead dog. Be the best you can be in everything you do. Not only work, but any meaningful pursuit in life. When you get up out of bed and your feet hit the floor, commit to being the best you can be, and that's being a lead dog. Love it. Love it. And that's something that you advertise in the boardroom when we have our trainee send off, right? Every single week that is told to our trainees and I make it crystal clear. Number one, what it means to be the lead dog. Is it easy? Absolutely not. But anything in life that's worth it is hard. Um, and being the lead dog is no different. And then I make sure everybody understands why we do this, why we come to work. Ultimately, we want to positively impact lives with what we do every single day. Love it. Now, Josh, our core values serve as the moral compass for all the decisions in our company. What is your favorite core value and why? My favorite core value, hands down, is we are the lead dog. But since we just got through talking about the lead dog, let's talk about my second favorite. And it's we, we execute with integrity. Um, integrity is super important to me. It is super important to our business. It is super important to taking care of customers. In my opinion, every other core value falls by the wayside if you don't ultimately execute with integrity. It's not a black and white issue. I mean, it is a black and white issue. There is no gray room with integrity. Folks, you either have it or you don't. It's true. And it's required to be successful in everything we do. So, Josh, you know, through the outage, you've been very clear in your message of taking care of our people through this unprecedented event. Why was that so important to you? There's nothing more important than our people. And ultimately, we're fortunate. We have Mike Mills and Matt Layette from DISH that are in the building with us tonight. Beautiful. Honestly, folks, it would have been really easy for them to call off the trip. Mike Mills had a national conference call at 4.30. We're standing right here right now. I just met him in the lobby of the hotel not 15 minutes ago. And it's right now it's, what, 5.30, 5.35? Um, it would have been really easy for them to, to cancel the trip. They're here because they're committed to our organization. So number one, I'm thankful for that partnership, but because of their commitment to us and they're doing the right thing, we ultimately are always gonna put our people first. Um, this is a bump in the road. This isn't something that is going to go on for months. Um, and ultimately we're positioned to, to withstand the obstacles and to withstand the financial burden, because there has been some. There, this hasn't been easy, and we've made decisions that ultimately we're going to lose money on. But you know what? The right thing to do was to take care of our people, put them first, make sure we did everything we could to keep them whole while we went through this. And emerging on the other side, we will be better off for it. And we will ultimately be stronger and positioned to continue our climb to reclaim the lead dog position as the number one RSP. Mm. Man, I do you have another question or should we close with that? Josh, what is your long-term vision for the organization? So my long-term vision for the organization is obviously we have our foundational business right now that is focused on satellite. Folks, it's a mature industry. We know we do a little less and less work every year. So very quickly in the coming years, you are going, well, very quickly, in the, year, the next couple of years, you will see us start talking about diversifying revenue. So there is still tons of money for all of us to make in the satellite TV business. And we will always take care of DISH. And if they've got work orders for us, we're going to run them. But at the same time, we're going to go find some other stuff to do. So 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, we all have a sustainable ESOP that is made up 
of satellite TV business. It could be wireless 5G business that's, that we're still partnered with, with DISH. It could be solar. It could be HVAC. It could be pest control. Fairly certain it will be something in the field services space. But we will, over the next couple of years, we will really start talking about diversification. The past couple of years, we've been focused on attract and retain. Mm -hmm. Two strategic mm -hmm. initiatives, attract and retain and di revenue diversification. We can't go diversify revenue until we can get the attract and retain part right. Guess what, folks? We're fully staffed. We still have opportunity. We still want to drive down turnover as low as we can. Thank you to everybody in the org that's working on those initiatives. But now that we've got that right, we can really get serious and turn our attention and focus on revenue diversification. So speaking of being unserious, there's an unserious yep. <laughs> question. So let's keep it a little light, right? So if you're on a desert island and you could take three, three, three things from your house with you, what would you choose? Uh, my two daughters. Okay. Um, and then... But I, I see. I knew he was going to say that when I was writing this, though, and like that's why I was like, so emphasize not, things, not, not items, things, so yes, not people. Yeah, I knew you were going to go the two daughter out. Ooh, that's tough. <laughs> that's tough. Um, uh, you're putting me on the spot here. So I'm going to take a bottle of wine. All right. um, I know it's not going to last long <laughs> on the island. Um, I'm going to take some means to start a fire because I don't think I'm not a survivalist I'm not I mean I used to do a little bit of hunting and fishing but I'm not like the majority of the folks who work for us and they're experts at it I'm in trouble if I'm on an island so I'm going to take I'm going to take something that's going to help me start a fire and then finally we're assuming there's no electricity right no electricity. we're roughing it right yeah, roughing it yeah. we're roughing it well for th those that don't know and have never been to the beach with me I have two colors one's white and the other one's red so I'm going to take loads of sunscreen because I do burn. I don't tan. Uh, I gave up on it a long time ago. Um, and eventually we'll have, I'm sure, cancer cut off. But those are the three things I'm taking. I like it. And I knew you were going to go the two daughter out. It speaks yep. to the kind of dad you are. So well, Thank you. Thank you very much. Josh, what do the Oscars mean to you? So the Oscars is one of my favorite nights of the year. Um, it's really a time for us to reflect to stop and pause amid everything that is the chaos of our business and look around and celebrate the best of the best. What our technicians accomplish day after day after day is truly amazing. It is a hard job and the results that the people that are joining us in that room tonight, um, it's nothing short of remarkable what they're able to do. So for for me to have the honor to work for this organization and to lead this organization and to stand in that room. And honestly, that's why I get nervous. I get nervous because there are some fantastic people that quite honestly are more capable than me sitting there watching me. And it is, it, it's the most special night for me of the year. Um, there, just recognizing excellence. And again, from a culture standpoint, that's who we are, John P. Um, that, it's all about lead dogs this evening. It sure is. I, I want to take a minute. I know we're out of time. No, I want to take a minute and thank both of you. Um, I know folks love the podcast. Passionate, you as well. I can see she's not on camera and you can't hear her, but she is filming this. Thank you for everything you do for our employees. Thank you for always you know, having a little bit of fun on this podcast. It's my first time to be on here. I love listening to it. I love that it's not always about business, that it can be about anything. Uh, but it's highly entertaining, and I know it's appreciated across the board. So thank you. Thank you, John. We appreciate that very much. Now, I do have one last question. All right. All right. We have seen tremendous amount of growth and development over the past couple of years. What accomplishments are you most proud of? So I'm most proud of... You know, everybody knows that we coined the phrase surviving the pandemic so we could thrive afterwards, survive to thrive. Well, let me tell you, in 2022, we thrived. All right. We successfully turned the page. And when it comes to CSAT, NC30, AC3, you pick an incentive metric. We're in, in the top two in the nation in, ter in terms of RSPs. Most of them were number one. All right. So we have started our climb back to the peak of the mountain. 2023, we're going to switch from thriving to winning, and we're going to go get it done, and we're going to reclaim our position. So just the progress and the resiliency and the adaptability that was shown through the pandemic and especially the recovery from the pandemic. 2022 in particular is really when we turn the page 
people put their foot down and they said, okay, we're going to get this done. We're going back to the mountaintop. Um, and it's, it was really remarkable to sit back and watch it happen because um, it's all a testament to our, all of our team members. You know, technicians, support staff in the field, support staff at corporate. It takes everybody to get that done. And we made tremendous strides in 2022. I'm extremely proud of that. Now I'm looking forward to what we can do in 2023. Yeah, I love that. And as we always say, our technicians are the foundation of our business, but it does take folks like Josh and Greg and Kevin and Joel making decisions during the tough times, right? And so uh, I'm confident in this leadership team, John P., Josh, uh, you know, I've just been so impressed by your personal growth, too, through the years because, you know, you had to learn the business a little bit when you stepped in, you know. And so uh, I'm super proud to have a leadership team that's proactive instead of reactive. And uh, I'm looking forward to us being on that mountaintop once again. I can't wait. Josh, thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us on the podcast and sharing a little bit of insight with our folks out there. And uh, uh, hey, man, we hope the uh, the glass of bourbon and the, the what good. was it, a five mile run? We're good. All right. We're good. Thank y'all. All right. I'll close it down. Yes, sir. All right. All right. So there yeah, you have it. Much. So um, yeah, if that doesn't get you fired up, nothing will. Man, I tell you what, what a way to close the program. Yeah. I am so fired up right now, and I, I, I don't think we're done. I think me and you, we're going to go in there. We're going to start hitting the tables here in a little bit, hey, right? Doing, a, doing do a couple yeah. of desk interviews. I'll, I'll shut my uh, my mic off and, and grab the camera from Passionate, and uh, let's go see what's going on at the tables out there. Well, let's do it, my friend. All right. What's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Good to see Good you. To see you. you too. John, hi. hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> All right, wow, a little too busy. Eating. That's okay. Greg Clifton out of our Montgomery office, yeah. long formerly time, Auburn. For, formerly Auburn. That's right, yeah. It's, uh, all these mergers we have, you know, it's hard oh, to keep track. So, uh, now how many times have you been to the Oscars now? This is five years in a row, five years in a row. And uh, so, of all the venues you've been to, is, is this the favorite? For you, or have you been to any other venues? No, this is the only one I've been to. It's always okay. been at Ross Bridge. I got you. Okay, yeah. well, good deal. Okay, so, uh, man, I tell you what, you started with us when? And back in uh, 2016. 2016, so a long time with the company and yeah. uh, achieved a lot here at Satellites Unlimited. And uh, so, uh, wh what's it going to be tonight? Is it going to be chicken, fish, or. Uh, oh, I'm going beef? with the beef. Go yeah, I've got to go tonight. for the steak, you know? I got you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going with the chicken myself. So. I hear you. I yes, hear you. so. But anyway, I hope you have a great night tonight, and uh, good luck and much success, all right? So we keep going, or we run around here? Where do we want to go next here? Let's see. They go over here to the training team. Right? The training team, okay. Whoa. Hey, there they are. What's up, guys? How we doing? Good to see you all. Hello, how are you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, Well, nice to meet both of you. Man. So... You guys, this is uh, how many times at the Oscars? First time? First time. First time at the Oscars, Grant. What do you think about that? Oh, my gosh. It's awesome. Yeah, so. What's that now? Happy to have the team here. You're happy to have This is the training team. You guys are uh, creating something brand new in the training environment. And uh, so tell us a bit about what, what to expect in training here in the future. A lot of good changes. A lot of, a lot of great changes. Yeah. Hopefully, being involved a lot more on an everyday operations level. Uh, more field presence and a lot more um, hands-on working with new guys so that we can uh, make sure we can back up when we tell them that they are supported from 138. And the training will be now, is it going to be a full week in the classroom? Is that what I'm hearing or is that not correct? Yeah, right now in the transition, we're in a full week of class right now. Um, okay. the, ultimately, the goal is to go to a two-week two, two training class, a full okay. two weeks. Now, how do you think that will benefit versus the old way? I think it's. I think it's gonna let the let the trainees know a lot more when they get to our lead technicians. So our lead technicians aren't tasked with having to teach them yeah. the absolute basics as far as use of hand tools and stuff. We'll be able to show a lot of our inexperienced guys um, a lot more before they hit the field. Well, I'll tell you what, guys, both of you have done a tremendous job as technicians. Now you're in the training environment, doing a great job there. We look forward to the future of 2023, and thank you both so very much, okay? Thanks, and uh, we've got some interviews coming up, I think, after the show tonight, too, right? We're going to be doing some interviews. The podcast booth will be open. Oh, the doors are open. All right. We're going to go inside now. Jeremiah Compton, how are you doing, my friend? Good. You doing all right? Good to see you. All right. And... 
Hello, I'm John. Nice to meet you. Pleasure. So, welcome to the uh, the Salas Limited Oscars, the 11th annual Oscars. And uh, now you haven't you've been here before, haven't you? Yes, sir. Third time. Third time. All right. So, uh, what's on the menu tonight? Uh, beef. Beef. Chicken. Chicken. Okay. I go with the chicken too. You're a chicken guy. I'm a chicken guy. Yeah. Nobody's talking. Nobody's taking the fish though. Why? Why is that? I don't know. So. <laughs> so, what are you looking forward to most tonight? Ah, uh, get the uh, trophy. Get the, get one of those awards, get the right? Award, yep. And I venture a guess you probably get one. That's the reason you're here, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, Jeremiah, great to see you. Okay, nice to meet you. All right, we're gonna keep on moving on here, folks. Hey, so, Brandon, what's up, buddy? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> we're, we are live on the podcast, folks. Okay. So, welcome. This is your first time at the Oscars. This is my first All time right. At the Oscars. And who is this lovely young lady this is my here? Andrea. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Happy, glad to have you both with us here. And uh, so, what do you think about this event? So, so far, it's uh, so good. I'm enjoying it. Um, I'm enjoying uh, being able to meet people in person yeah. um, that I've met virtually and yeah. trying to look at them and say, I, I think we met before virtually. So, that's pretty cool. So well, we're far. so glad to have you both here tonight and hope you have a great time. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Welcome. All right. Where are we going? Oh, look at this. Alex Gobell, everybody. Hello, how you doing? And nice to see you again. How are you? All right, so Alex, a big night. You're doing some uh, presenting tonight, I believe? Yes, for Ontex. I'm really excited about the, the winner for last year. So it's going to be a special night for him. So I'll tell you what, a, a lot of exciting things happening in Ontech with ADT and everything else is going on. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about that, if you would. So, I mean... Guys, we, we've really started ADT in February of last year, and we've done a tremendous job. So uh, the technicians, everyone's kind of, you know, making sure that our customers are aware of this new offering. Yeah. It's a lot of money to be made from our, for our technicians, for our company. So it's really exciting times. It really is. It certainly is. 2023 will be a great year for us. There's no question about that. And tonight you're presenting for uh, On Tech. And now how many years now have... Have you presented here at the Oscars? Uh, this will be my fourth year, fifth year, something like that, yeah. How has it changed over the last few years you've been here? Oh, man, it's been, you know, I like to see technicians that a lot of times you just see them, you know, in passing when yeah. you're at the office or you talk to them over the phone. But to actually get to interact with them here is fantastic. I love the Oscars. It seems it gets better every single year and tonight will be no exception. So great to see both of you and have fun tonight, okay? All right, here we go. You're here. Hey, folks, how we doing? All right. Good to see you. All right. Hey, buddy, how you doing, man? Good to see you. All right. Hey, what's up, man? Long time no see. How you been? Hello, how you doing? As they all make their way into the ballroom. Dustin Colley, how are you doing, my friend? Good to see you. How are you doing, buddy? <laughs> Dustin Colley, a, uh, a longtime Monroe champion That's right. in the Louisiana office. And uh, FSM since how long now it's been? Uh, I mean, four years now, I believe. Four Probably years. Probably a little All under right. four. All right. Probably so a little under four. Always great to see you, my friend. You bet. And uh, you, bet. you know what? We also want to remind everyone that we're going to have the the after hours uh, podcast po after hours. Yeah. Podcast after hours. So come by and see us after that. Yeah. Okay. So after the show. I should have been here last night. <laughs> oh, is that the real after hours show? <laughs> the real after hours. <laughs> is that right? I heard that from somebody else. Yeah. Uh, All right. Let's. Uh, Continue to go around. Trying to fix my microphone here. Okay, my, right. Here we go. All right. Where are we going here? Award winner right here. Is that Wes? Wes? Yeah. Wes. Hey. What's up, buddy? How, how you doing, doing my friend? I'm good, man. How are you? Good to see you. How's Grant? Look at Grant there. <laughs> We're doing a little thing for the uh, for the podcast here, and uh, he's the defending champion. He is the defending <laughs> last year. That's right. So. He was uh, the uh, Roddy L. McKinney lead dog winner last year, so uh, great to see you, my friend, and uh, how's things going for you? It's going good, man. Going good really deal, good. Good deal. So. I'm here with you, so I'm going doing yeah. really good. <laughs> <laughs> and Grant. Indeed, indeed. So uh, you have a great night, my friend. Great seeing you. Yes, okay. Sir, you All right. What's up, man? How you What's doing? What's going on, man? You doing all right, Mr. See, P? So the last time we saw each other was when? Uh, let's see. I seen you. Well, I seen you at the Oscars last year. 
Uh, when was the last time? Did you, have you been to the? When was the last time you came to our office? It's um, a pop coin. Look, put me on the spot. Uh, help me out. It's probably been. It's probably been about maybe a year or so. I think. Yeah, right? at least last year's. Oscars, yeah, at yeah. Least. So, and you've been. How many Oscars now have you been to? This is five years straight. Five years yeah. straight. All yeah. right, fantastic. Since so, 2018. And uh, do they get better every year for you? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it every year. It's something we look forward to every single year. Well, good deal. Yeah. Uh, my wife told me a long time ago when we first started coming to these. If I don't win, yeah. or if I don't get the invite, I have to rent a room here. Yeah. I don't want to have to do that, so I got to make sure and get invited every single year. Well, it's great to have you here. Great to have you. Great to have you all here, folks, and I uh, hope you have a great night tonight. Okay. All right. Got, uh, big Evan Elliott, you know the one. You remember Evan Elliott? I remember Barbie. Evan Elliott very well. That's right. The, the Barbie, the, the Barbie song that he uh, would do on his demos, right? So that's getting a reach. Yeah, and I also understand that you're going through some uh, huge net training now. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just completed the online course. So. Now, refresh my memory because you were killing it last year with HughesNet Retails, yeah. uh, I think in the Chattanooga market, correct? Yeah, I went up there and got seven in a week. So, And there, you also didn't, was there a prize involved with that? I think oh, that yeah, went, we got it to Traeger Grill. That's right, I knew it was something. It's like, yeah. I forgot about that. So you got the grill plus the uh, the $150 for each install in Hughes right. sales. You did quite well for yourself. $1,050 so. plus the grill. And Man, I am so right. glad that you are getting yourself certified now. Yeah, and I, now using I, can, that. So, I can get those combos going. Yes, you can, there absolutely. So great seeing you guys. And uh, Okay, we're going to move on now, I guess, right? I'm following you. You're going to follow me. I don't know where I'm going, though. Hey, Mr. Danny McKinney right here. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Danny, how you doing? I'm Good doing to see well, you. John, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. So, want to say a few words for the uh, the audience out there? All right, just looking forward to an exciting evening. A lot of great awards. Um, see who the uh, R.L. McKinney Lead Dog Award is going to be and Office of the Year. And just always a uh, great time of year to uh, get to see all of our friends out there. And I uh, hope everybody's doing well and stay safe. This is uh, Camilo Munoz. Did I say pronounce it correctly? Okay. Yes. Out of our Ocala office, and uh, one of the nicest young men you'll ever meet. <laughs> and I, I remember still, the first time I interacted with you was on the phone, and you had a customer that you were trying to help, and you called me directly, and we, you got it taken care of. And I, I appreciate that so much about you, man. So, so tell us about how was your night tonight? Pretty good, man. The food was amazing. I mean, we're able to win an award. So, I mean, to me, this is the first time I get to come here. Very enjoyable. I can't complain. Well, fantastic. And uh, so, how long of a drive was it for you to get to uh, oh, from Ocala? That was a drive. That was a drive. It took us about eight hours plus the stops along the way. So, it took a little bit longer than that. Wow. Okay. But it was very enjoyable. The place is very nice. The hotel is really neat. We were at the pool earlier today. And that was enjoyable. And I'm looking at my cue cards here, folks, because I know I have some information on Camillo. I'm going to go ahead and try to flip these over here. So this is live, by the way, Camillo. Did you know that? Yes. I did not know. <laughs> <we were> live, <laughs> no, but yeah. And no. this is your first time with us, right? Yes. First okay. time coming All here right. to the Oscars. And it's definitely very inspiring to see you guys that, that were here and to see all their accomplishments and everything that yeah. they, they've been able to, to accomplish oh, Wonderful, here. wonderful. So, now, I remember also, one thing, I, I, can't, I can't find his card in here, I'm passionate, but I'm, I know it's in there, though. So here's one thing I do remember about you, though. We had the, the side hustle episode of the podcast. Yes. So tell, us, tell the audience a little bit about that, what you do as your side hustle. I do a little bit of everything, you know. We do a little property management. We take care of a couple of lawns. Uh, I mean, I still work in a catering sometimes on the weekend. Next weekend, I got to go cater another party. Yeah. Uh, so, no, we stay a little bit busy somehow, some way. And thanks to my wife, I, and she's got a lot of patience of always over being there. absent. Hi, yeah. how are you? You want to come in? Come over here. Come on. <laughs> Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> how proud are you, this young man, huh? Oh. He's awesome. I am very proud. He's always working hard. Wonderful, wonderful, yes. wonderful. And I have some information about Camilo as well. As a seven-time Tech of the Quarter champion, a seventeen-time Tech of the Month champion as well. Um, and you were 
with us, formerly from DRS, then uh, we joined Satellites Unlimited at that point. So, Camille, thank you so very much for stopping over. Congratulations, and safe travels back to Ocala for both of you, okay? Thank you, you take care now. All right, Camila Munoz from the Ocala office, folks. Right, yeah. Who else we got now? Come on. Good to see you, man. Good to see you in person. Who else is coming on down here right now? Chase, you got to talk to us, my friend. Come on. Kenny Jackson, last time I saw Kenny was at Zach Crumpton's wedding. Remember that? What a festive night that was, indeed. Yeah, vaguely, right. <laughs> that was a fun night, too. Hey, I got Chase Bowman here from the Birmingham office. Uh, Chase, is uh, he won the Oscar tonight, and uh, I guess now you have two. Is that correct? Yes, sir. So last year was your first time winning? Mm-hmm. Fantastic. And uh, Chase is also a, uh, a top 20 tech winner in 2021, as we mentioned. He was the Tech of the Quarter champion six times, Tech of the Month champion ten times, and currently you're now a CTI. Yes, sir. So how are you enjoying that role? I'm enjoying it a lot. And that is a, uh, I think CTI stands for Certified Training Instructor? I'm going to go with that, yeah. We're going to go with that, okay. Yeah, Grant would know for sure, right? So Calibrated, certified, whatever Calibrated, you certified. And one thing about Chase, I mean, you've done it all in the company, right? I mean, not just the dish work, but also ADT, um, HughesNet, right? You've, you're very well-rounded in every aspect of this yes, business. Yes, sir, everything we do. Great. So what does a night like this mean to you personally? Uh, it makes it all worth it. All worth it. Makes it all worth it. Well, fantastic. So we, are, we wish you much, much continued success. Congratulations again, Chase. Great seeing you, my friend. Appreciate it. Chase Bowman, everybody. There he is. Birmingham office. Now he's with the uh, calibrated tr training instructor. Uh, I think that's calibrated or certified. Corporate. Corporate training instructor. See? Corporate training instructor. We're going to go with that. So this young man here, Kenny Jackson. Come on up, Kenny. How are you doing today, my friend? Yeah, sir. How about you? Sir? Fantastic. Great to see you again. It's been a couple of months or so, but yes, uh, yes, a long-time veteran here at Satellites Unlimited. How many years has it been now? Uh, a little over 15 years now. 15 years. And uh, tell us a bit about your journey throughout those years with Satellites Unlimited. Uh, technician, uh, calibrated trainer when we had that program. Uh, went to FSM, stayed there a few years, moved back out to Tech, uh, back to uh, Lead Tech now, just trying to complete work. Outstanding. And how many Oscar events have you attended? Uh, this is number eight. Number eight. So outstanding. You, you've been to some of the different venues, I take it, then, right? Yes, sir. We started out at Berber, then we came over here with everything. Yeah. So you were at the very first I was event. At the very first one. Yes, wow. Sir. Okay. So how does that event compare to this one? Well, Berber had a lot more interesting cars to look at than yeah. over here. So, <laughs> I mean, that's it. It was just more. It was a different yeah. venue and everything. Yeah. So yeah. You had the cars and stuff, but this one here's a lot more. I don't know, nice than Berber was and everything. So the fact that you've attended at least eight times, yeah. I believe, what what does this event mean to you personally? It's just a nice time to get to see the other technicians, see what everybody's doing, uh, see how everybody's getting along, and just uh, recognize the award winners. A 15-year veteran with a company, uh, Kenny, in, in closing, what advice can you give to all of the new technicians out there watching this program right now? Don't give up. Just keep trying to be the best. Very well said. Kenny, thank you so very much. Thank Great you, to see you, my friend. All right. Kenny Jackson of Montgomery office, folks. We keep moving on here. Let's see who else, who else we can have next here. Let's see. Abraham Trapani, Wesley Carroll. Great to see both of you gentlemen. Yes, sir. And the thing you have in common is the fact that you are both – Previous Roddy L. McKinney lead dog winners. What, what does that mean to you guys? And start with Abraham first. Uh, I guess it means that we just had a good year, <laughs> tried our best, and got recognized for it. So always appreciate that recognition for sure. And, and Wes, last year you were the big winner. Yes, sir. It's an honor just to have something with Roddy's name on it. Outstanding. And you guys are both are longtime veterans here. We talked about this. Uh, you started in 2009. Is that yes, correct? Sir. Yes, okay. Sir. And Abe, you started in 2014. Sir? July, I believe, was it correct? Uh, May is what I think May? we have on record. Okay, okay. I've always said April, though, because that's when I think it was the higher date. But it was some, never mind. So, <laughs> that's a long story. That's okay. <laughs> so over the years, you guys have been here a long time. How has the company changed? Tell us about some of the things that you've seen that, uh, that you really have really impressed you in the last several years. Well, obviously, um, starting out with this company, uh, personally, I've changed. I think a lot of the guys that stuck it out through a lot of the changes that we've seen, um, you know, have seen those changes in the ups and downs. Right now we're going through one of those lows. Right. Um, and we have rebounded. You know, we really have as a company uh, because of the leadership, the adaptability, those values that yeah. we do have, um, which, you know, it, it can sound corny that, 
hey, if you adapt those values, you know, but they really do affect your decision making, you know, the way that you act. And it's not because you're taking something on that a value that you shouldn't have, but it should be the values that we try to instill in ourselves, right? We've established these core values because as men, as women, as people, if we live those out, they produce great results. Preach, brother. So those those values aren't a guideline for just what you should do, but what produces good things in your life. So obviously all of that is based on the leadership that was here. You know, Roddy L. McKinney, you know, he gets up there, he prays from his heart. You know, that kind of, that, that only comes from God. Yep. You know, that heart that he has for his people, that he had as a leader here, as, as an owner here. And, you know, it's passed down to the people that knew him, that knew this company back then. And I feel like, you know, hopefully going forward, we'll continue to have those, those moments where we, when we have those decisions, these times of low, we can lean back on what made us great. No question about that. And, you know, both of you gentlemen, longtime veterans here at the company, as technicians. Uh, Wes, you started in 2009. What advice can you give to the newer technicians out there watching this program right Stay now? Stay focused. Don't quit. It'll get better. It sure will. All right. Guys, thank you both so very much. Yes, sir. A pleasure always. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care now. Wes Carroll out of Montgomery. Abraham Tapani out of Birmingham. We got we got the Aberville team here. Wow! Holy smokes! Here we go. Chris, you just won a victory yes, here today. Yes, nice. sir, How many does this make now? Uh, this is number eight. Number eight. Yes, wow. Yes. Okay. Uh, Bobby, how many times now? Ten. 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 Now, Bobby, you have the distinct honor, though I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, you have attended, I think, more Oscars than any other technician in the company. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Wow. How does that make you feel, my friend? Oh, okay. Humble. Humble? Yeah. And tonight you also won a safety award as well. I did. Now, this was not the first time you won a safety award, was it? Second. The second time. When was the last time you won one? Not last year, but the year before that. The year before that, got yes, you. That was yep, the, the yep. Wall of Fame, yep. uh, yes, Safety sir. Wall of Fame Award. So yes, let's talk to Evan now. Evan, how you doing, my friend? Good, great. Good. So you always have a great attitude. Everyone t says that you're just a very positive guy. Uh, yes, how many Oscars now have you attended? This is my first this one. This is your first one, okay. So how does it feel to have a, a victory under your belt and earn that, that trophy? It's, it's great. It's a, it's a goal I set out to be my first year to yeah. hit – to hit tier five and in the Oscars, and I did it. And now you're going through HughesNet training, which uh, right. I'm very happy to hear that because you're somebody that sends us a lot of Hughes retail referral leads. Which, by the way, you can earn 150 bucks for every successfully installed HughesNet referral. It's a cheap plug there I got to put yeah. in. So there you go. But Evan, keep up the great work, my friend. All, All right. right. Thank you, Josh. Here for the first time. Here for the also, first time. Yes, yes. Thanks to some of these gentlemen here standing beside me. Some, uh, some that didn't make it here that are still at our office. Uh, I had a really good year last year, and, uh, you know, just thankful for all the guys we've got there. So, And I got to tell you, too, you know, Josh does a great job uh, responding to email, and I know I send you a lot of email, don't I? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. I try to jump on them as quick as possible because they're a lot of money on your emails. Yes. <laughs> I, I appreciate I, that. Try to, try to get these, uh, these yeah. referrals yeah. Uh, signed yeah. quickly. <laughs> also, I got to say this about, about Josh. He has the absolute best butt. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, Boston oh, oh, oh. butt. Oh, oh okay. The, the, remember the picnic? Uh, oh, my gosh. It was the absolute, I mean, so tender. It was delicious. So, if you want to find a guy that can make really good Boston butt, this is the man right here. All right. Guys, thank you all so very much. Congratulations to all of you. Absolutely outstanding, okay? And safe travels. You guys heading back tonight or are you staying here? I'm staying. All right. Well, good. Well, you'll be safe here then. That's good. All right. I'm ready to keep going here. Wow. John, what's up, buddy? How we doing, Good to see you. We, now, John and I sat at the uh, table together. Yes, and did. Bethel, good to see you, my friend. Nice to meet you it's too. been a few. Well, we met before. I met you before. We met at the Chattanooga picnic many years ago. Okay. You may not remember that. That was, uh, I don't know, it was 2016 or so, perhaps. So, something, I don't 
I can't remember yeah, I've now. I've been with you guys five years. Okay. That's Tw- right, five years. Well, it was one of those picnics. Maybe it was the 2018. I can't remember. Bro. I'm, I'm getting old now, so I forget things. But I know we met before, though. So, And, John, a victory tonight for you. Yes. And uh, how many times now at the Oscars? Uh, this is my second time. Second time. All right. Mm-hmm. And uh, how did, did this victory compare to last year's victory for you? Uh, I set a goal, and instead of walking away with one last year, I walked away with two. Two. Okay. So, well, fantastic. So, know, Setting a bar high and yeah. trying to meet that goal. And I understand, do they, have, do they have a nickname for you? Uh, yes, there has been a nickname. It's a very uh, affectionate nickname, uh, the Terminator, is that correct? That is correct. <laughs> now, and, how, how, uh, tell us about well, that. Well, from what I understand, uh, Mr. Grant gave me the nickname a couple years ago. Uh, apparently, he just said I came out of nowhere in on-site sales, and uh, so... It just, I was like, yeah, whatever. And next thing I know, everybody's calling me in my office, the Terminator. And I'm like, well, I'm just going to run with it. You know, and just, they need a kill, you know, a good seller. I'll have my FSM call me and say, John, I need something. I need a Terminator. And I don't know what happens. It just, it just comes out. It just happens. Well, apparently in this business, that's a good nickname to have. So, so congratulations again on the victory. And Bethel. Let's talk about uh, your victories here. This is the first time at the Oscars? It is. Okay, so also you're a uh, Tech of the Quarter champion. You got that one time. 11-time Tech of the Month champion. Very impressive. But also, too, I did not know this about you, that you played college football at Cleveland State. Tell us about that. Co- college basketball. I'm sorry, college basketball. Excuse me, college basketball. And I played at Alabama and m as well. Wow. Tell, tell us all about that experience. Uh, you know, I had a pretty good career. You know, I was one of the top players in the country. Yeah. And I played overseas briefly. I didn't like it over there. So I came back and started working, of course. And uh, so that's, that's about the extent of that. But I had a pretty good career. I was, I was, I was an honorable mention All-American in, wow. ju- in junior college yeah. and, and Division Two ball. I could when I came back, I sat out a couple years, so I couldn't go to Division One. So I went to one of the top Division II uh, programs in the country. Yeah. And we was highly successful. Came up short and went in the national championship, but uh, I, I had a pretty productive career. A lot of great memories, too, I bet, huh? Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Well, fantastic. Bethel, thank you so very much. John, thank you so very much. Guys, bless you. Keep up the great work, okay? Fantastic. I'll be back. Ah, the Terminator. There he goes. <laughs> And I'll be back as well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I hope you guys will be back. Yes. <laughs> Thank you both very much. All right. I'll tell you what, what a great night this has been so far. And I think right now we've we got, got we've got the Monroe team here coming on up here right now. Office of the year. Second year in a row. It's incredible. Well, come on up. Come on up, guys. We'll have to kind of get everybody in here and get everyone tight in here. So. Hey, buddy. What's up, man? How you doing? Good to see you. Good. How y'all doing? Fantastic. So. Hey, you're surrounded, John. I am surrounded. Yes, indeed. So. By winners. Amisha, everyone's here. All right. Lavelle, everyone's here. Dustin, okay. So, Mike. Yes, sir. Two years in a row. How does this feel? Uh, it's unreal. <clears throat> uh, we didn't really uh, expect it, by no means, with all the newcomers. But uh, I think it's well deserved for this team here. Yes, sir. Did you have any idea at all that the Monroe office would take it for the second year in a row? No, sir. No, sir. We we had no idea. It was a it was a brutal year. We had a lot of good good battles. So. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, you got a great team here. No question about that, yes, right? Yes, so. Sir. So why don't you introduce for the audience out there? Introduce, go around these all these oh, folks. Uh, we have Mr. Garrett Holly on the end, FSM from Monroe. We have Mr. Matthew Ice, technician from Monroe. Mr. Jonathan Pryor here is uh, one of our technicians. Sorry, step out of the way here. One of our lead techs here. We have Miss Amisha Ross, who is no longer with Monroe, uh, trans, uh, transferred to uh, corporate. So. We're doing a great job, I might add. So I know it. Last year she held us together. Uh, we're going to miss her. We're going to miss her. Uh, Mr. Lavelle. Lavelle already well, had a victory what, tonight. What can I yes, say? sir. Our yes, house man. manager. Yes, yep. sir. Of the year. And then we have Mr. Dustin Colley on the end over here. Mike says, you know, he just said that he didn't think we got off of the year. The other t- rest team did. 
<laughs> I'm just going to let y'all know. We, <laughs> we kind of knew what was We kind of, we was going to be upset if we didn't get it. It was about two weeks ago. We were, you know, bad days, whatever was going on. And Mike said, boy, this, this ain't officer of the year stuff here. And uh, so I, I wanted to bring that up because, dang it, we got it. So, <laughs> so put it back in his face. Lavelle, how does this make you feel tonight? I mean, you had the, the uh, Warehouse uh, Manager of the Year Award. Now you've got the Office of the Year. What, what's going through your mind right now? Well, it's been a pleasure working with the whole group here, uh, making us an outstanding office. And I can guarantee we can look forward to coming back here next year. Absolutely. You're going to make it uh, three-peat, right? We're going to try and get All right. the third one for the mountain. Okay. And Amisha, i got to talk to you because now you have transitioned from the role of CSR to now you're in the Route Central team, correct? Mm-hmm. So, correct. So tell us about that. How have, you, how have you enjoyed it so far? I've enjoyed it. It's something different, totally different. So I, I've, I've enjoyed it, learning something new, being with the company for so long. So. Well, from out, of, from out of here, from the command center supervisor, Chris Harris, you're doing a fantastic job, so keep it Thank up. You. So. Thank he, you. He poached some of my, my greatest talent. Yes, yes he, he, did. he did. All right. <laughs> so, guys, any closing comments here? Uh-oh. Uh, just looking forward, coming back for year three. Year three, okay. Matthew? Uh, great office to work for. I've uh, worked for many years here. All right. I just want to say thank you to Mike and uh, Dustin and the whole crew, Misha, uh, big warehouse man, Lavelle. And uh, Garrett, you know, they gave me a chance three years ago of coming up in September and without this group. Uh, they've uh, been an awesome team to work for, and I love Monroe. Go Monroe! All right. Hey, give yourselves a round of applause. Give them a round of applause, folks. Monroe, Office of the Year, second year in a row. Going to make it a three-peat. Watch out. They're coming to get you. All right. <laughs> Thank you, folks. All right. Now, this program will not be complete until we hear from the 2022 Roddy L. McKinney lead dog winner, Mr. Ryan Hebert. I see Ryan off in the distance. We need Ryan Hebert up here because our battery power is going rapidly. We have yes, indeed. Ryan, congratulations, my friend. Thank you, How are you Thank doing? You. Fantastic. Best yeah. night ever. And how are you? This is Jacqueline. How are you? Well, nice to meet you. All right, fantastic. This your inspiration? It is. Every good, bit of it. fantastic. Every bit of it. Motivation, inspiration. I, I got to tell you though, all of it. I miss you around the Birmingham office. I miss you too. Yeah, man. I absolutely miss you. This young man was always very helpful. And anytime a, a walking customer would come into the building had a receiver issue or remote control issue, Ryan, if Ryan Hebert was there, Ryan Hebert would help me out. And I always appreciate that about you I very appreciate much. Appreciate you. So, Thank you. You have quite uh, an array of accomplishments, my friend. Um, uh, you, this is now your second time winning an Oscar, it right? Is. It okay. is, yes. Uh, and of course, you, this tonight you won the big one. Though we'll talk about I that know. in a moment. Uh, you were uh, the top tw- one of the top twenty techs in twenty twenty one. That was the first time you won the Oscar. Right. Tech of the quarter champion four times. Tech of the month champion twelve times in your career with us. Uh, you started, you've been here now, uh, July 4th of 2014, so... Nine years math almost. Math correct is nine years yeah, almost, coming up with nine years. And So how have things changed over those nine years for you? <laughs> a lot, a lot. Um, I came in here, I, I never in a million years imagined that I'd, you know, be here now. Like, it's it's been a dream come true. I started in Birmingham as a tech, I went to FSM, and then we moved to New Orleans as GM, and then... Made the decision to go back down to technician, and it's it's been amazing. Like it's, everything happens for a reason, and this is this has been everything. Like this job has been everything to me. Well, that's wonderful to hear, and to this day, you still hold the single month record for sales. Did you know that? I do. That's what this ring got me. <laughs> oh, got let me see. Ring. I saw in that ring. Yes, that is a beautiful ring. Yes, thank you. You could see it sparkle from the stage. It was amazing. I mean, I so. mean Mike James got me this. Looked like a Super Bowl That's ring. what I thought it was. I had no I, idea. I feel like it is. Kevin Peele's yeah. asked me, what's, what's up with that ring? I there? Said, I don't know. was this something from his childhood when he was no. given yeah. stuff by the Saints like Mark Anderson? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, my man Mike James got me this as a gift. When wow. I had the the that's, record-breaking month. That's quite a gift. And, and folks, speaking of that record-breaking month, $21,509.53 to be exact absolutely incredible appreciate that yes and tonight of course 
The biggest night of the year for Satellites Unlimited. You won the biggest prize for the Oscars, the Roddy L. McKinney Lead Dog Award. Tell us what went through your mind when you heard your name announced. I started feeling nervous when they started talking the numbers and, and the history of the tech who won it. and started telling her, I think, I think they're talking about me up there. My heart started racing. Um, and when they said my name, that was, uh, I don't know, that was, I was kind of speechless. Um, I, I don't ever, I've, I've never been this proud of myself for something I did at work before. Like, <laughs> you know, I do this and I make money. And, well, you have every right to be proud, my friend. That's quite an accomplishment. You're now you're in good company with other uh, prior winners as well, champions in the company. And yeah. any closing greatest comments? Greatest of greats. The greatest of the greats. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. The champion of champions. There yeah. you are. Uh, any closing comments for the audience out there? I, I love this company. Y'all have been you, Mr. Roddy, Mr. Danny, Grant, Greg, everybody. Y'all have been fantastic. Alex Gabell, everybody has been great to me. This is a true career that I plan to be at until I retire. And, Hope to do this for a long time to come. Maybe this won't be my last Roddy L. McKinney Award either. You never know, right? Right. But the love's right back at you, my friend. We're so appreciate proud of you. Happy to have you a part of this company and wish you continued success in the appreciate future. Appreciate it. All right? Thank you. Great to see you. Okay, you take care Thank now. You. He's the man. He is the man. Yes, indeed. This is his night. He is the Roddy L. McKinney Lead Dog Award winner, Ryan Haybear, out of Baton Rouge. Um, but uh, I tell you what, just such a, uh, a, a super impactful evening, recognizing our top performers in our industry. Um, you know, John, I can't say enough about the young men and women that were recognized tonight. It was an incredible night. I mean, my feeling, Grant, the greatest Oscars of them all happened tonight, the 11th annual, and the message moving forward in 2023 is winning, winning, winning. We will be, Satellites Unlimited will be the lead dog in 2023. John, I, I mean, I have nothing to counter on that. All I can say is I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, being at the top of the mountain. It's been a while, my friend. Certainly has. And again, what a great night. Congratulations to all of the winners out there uh, and for making this such a special event for everybody. Hey, I tell you what, that's a great way to call. And how about the live podcast tonight, right? Yeah, like, really, you know, yeah. Uh, yes. And let's give, uh, you know, let's give some, you know, Brandy Singleton was recognized yep. tonight. We yep. had leadership on tonight. Um, you know, I know, hey, we've been doing this podcast. We're doing what we love. But also in the background, you didn't see her the whole time. Passionate Telfair. Tell Goodness gracious, am I ever going to get Passionate's last name right <laughs> on a podcast? Uh, passionate Telfair. Uh, putting in that hard work behind the camera, and, and uh, so we're, we're certainly appreciative yeah. of her and all the work that went into this event. We, tonight, we so. certainly are, and Passion is telling us to wrap right now. Yeah, so so. <laughs> I tell you what, with that, Oscars 2022, 2023, yep. or 2022 performance, yep. we're out. It's an amazing year.